This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by Lee Health. Southwest Florida, we're so thrilled to have here in this fabulous hospital, the Children's Hospital, a man who has always worked with children and they've always grown up to be upstanding citizens. He's the publisher of the Community Press newspaper. He's a math, ma mathematical genius. He's tutored and taught so many students in math over the years. In fact, I first came to know him when a friend of mine said that she had to go and get her tutoring from Mr. Middlebrooks. He was the best. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome here Mr. James Middlebrooks. Thank you for the welcome. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. How many titles have you say what you say you've had in your life? At least 20? <laughs> Could be that. You never stop, do you? <laughs> never, man. I'll only stop when the Lord calls me in. Man, give some advice to people out there who, when they get up in age a little bit, they decide to just sit there. I mean, you still doing this. You always coming up with new ideas. I mean, is that just your nature from the time you were a child or something? Lee, I've always loved being the, the owner of a business. I've owned a business since I was 15. Really? Yes, I did. I used to make, and it's not all about the dollars, but I used to make more money in my first business at age 15 than I did when I was principal of Riverdale High School. Really? I sure did. Man, now you just got a chance to see your granddaughter was on this show a few seconds ago with Tashika Perry on Girl Talk. Tell us how proud you are of her. Oh, you know, I look at uh, Aspire TV sometime, and there's a young lady who wants to be a dancer. And every time I see her, I think about my granddaughter. And I, I say to her, we, we carried her down to Miami this past week, and I say, Shh, Eden, there's anything you want to be, you can be. You have the skills, you have the talent, you have the, she's a beautiful young lady. So whatever you aspire to be, go for it. Don't let nobody stop you. Ask the Lord to help you uh, to go and do what you have to do, and he will prevail. But it's really great to have that parent support, her mom, uh, LaShawn, I'm plugging you on TV. And then, uh, then the grandparents support all of that support mechanism in general with you being a, a great educator for many years. All of that contributes to the success possibility for children, right? It does. You just can't, when you have parent parental support and you have friends support, um, the Lord support, you just can't beat it, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go all the way you want to go. Now, this right here is an iconic newspaper. John, you can just do your best. And uh, this newspaper has uh, changed the way we get our news in Southwest Florida uh, from the newspaper. Uh, the Community Press, which you are the fine publisher of, and people, of course, see me on television uh, talking about how I get my news from the Community Press. I want to congratulate you on the success of this paper. Thank you so kindly. But I'm just one of the entities that's doing the Community Press. I have Pablo um, help us with all the layouts. Veronica does all the, the information for us, reading to be sure we're not misspelling words and putting in English the right pro pronouns and things of that nature. Because <laughs> people will, they will do their very best sometime to come and see your faults. Make sure it's grammatically correct. Correct, exactly. Uh, of course, I experience that all the time with the television show and try to make sure that we uphold to those standards as well. But it's good to discipline yourself with the exercises of doing things right. I'm saying that to lead into the math that you do. Uh, uh, if you do things right, strive for excellence, be precise as you are as a mathematician, those things lead to making you more professional, wouldn't it, would you say? I would say that so hardly. You know. Um, details. Details, will do. Um, People don't realize how important math and language arts is to any individual. Um, I can make money on top of money if I wanted to make money by teaching math or tutoring math. PSAT, SAT, ACT, even the GED. 
if person really wanted to have success by taking exams, there it is. And you don't have to pay a lot. To take. It takes a little time to prepare yourself for that. But preparation is out there. My son is a great mathematician. I'm not the mathematician. My son is the mathematician. Really? Oh, Lord. It, I don't compare to him. No, sir. And you would never know it. He's so unassuming. <laughs> oh, Lord. But that, I would think that that's a general demeanor of a math person. They're not, they're, they're, they're just kind of unassuming. By, we don't go by boasting. We let it be known by people that we help. Are you born with that? I mean, some people just seem like they get that math so easy, that calculus, that, that geometry, that trigonometry, the algebra. I'm saying those things because I took some advanced courses like that in high school, but I kind of got away from it and didn't finish the books. I went to a black high school, then inner city, and we always never finished our book. So when I got to the next class to go to the next level in math, I was always kind of behind because I didn't finish that book. I, I'm just saying a lot of stuff, but I know you can speak to it. Well, when I was in high school, which is many, many moons ago, because I'm 75 now. So when I was in high school, it was required that you had a general course, you had a uh, college prep course, or you had a work study pro. And if you had the college prep courses, you had to take four years of mathematics, four years of language arts, Believe it or not, four years of physical education and a foreign language, two mm -hmm. years of a foreign language. Well, I always wanted to be a pharmacist. Okay. And what, well, I went to the University of Pittsburgh back in 59. It was so cold up there, so I, I said, no, I got to come back home. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes. So I went to South Carolina State, and they stopped the pharmaceutical program. So what's the next thing? Math and chemistry. Outstanding. Don't. Your daughter, LaShawn, once told me that you told her or something like that. I know LaShawn is good in the I math, too, graduated from it. MIT. She said something to the effect that your hobby or just for having fun, you would read math books and manuals and just for fun. You just did that just for fun. And you took uh, advanced math courses in college just to get a quick, easy grade. <laughs> like, <laughs> like people be running for those courses and you take them just for a quick grade. You know, I told my I told my daughter once, if I wanted to be on the honor roll, I'd take an extra math class. <laughs> <laughs> and that was true. I said, yeah, I tell you, people I'd at home saying what you know that right. Take an extra math class or a chemistry course before I can get that that high B or that 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 A before I can stay on out of road. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> now uh, the. Uh, we got your number appearing on the screen throughout the interview, but I want people to know that you are, you're a professor at Barry University. We'll professor. Talk about that too as well. Uh, at Barry University, because students have problems in math, uh, algebra, geometry, statistics, probability, or logic, and those are the courses that teachers must take in order to pass the state exam to teach math. So at Barry, I've been at Barry for about 30 years now. Really? Yes, and I say to them, Barry, let me teach these math classes for you. For students won't be so um, down with their attitude about mathematics. I got you. So I have two courses that I teach at math, the 106 and the 154, and that will give you your requirements for graduation. But I also teach math the way you have to take the exam. And by taking an exam, SATs and those kind of things, there is two answers you should always be able to throw out and have a reason for throwing it out. And so I teach that approach and I give the students an idea of when they get ready to take those state assessment exams, they're going to go in with the attitude, I'm going to throw out half of the answers and zero on just two of each question. And I would have a reason for selecting the right answer. It's interesting. I know a while well, people can contact you for any of their math needs, right? For their oh, children yes. or anything. You still do tutoring. Oh yes. Okay, we want people to know that. So uh, one of the things that I've always marveled in any teacher who can take a, what people might consider complex uh, subjects and simplify them in a way that people understand, I call it Sesame Streeting. And whenever I talk to people who've been around you, have been tutored by you, have been in your classes, they always rave about, Mr. Miller Brooks made math fun and easy. I could understand it for the first time. Uh, is there some special way you able to do that? Yes, I, 
I enjoy teaching math. And the reason is, is that I will give a student a reason. You have to take two math classes to get your degree. So why not have fun taking those math classes for you don't have that stigma to say, oh, I hate to go to this class today. You're going to be wanting to come to my class. And I'm not boasting anything. I just feel when I have the opportunity to be with you and teach you those math classes, you won't go and go out there and say, oh, I hate this class. I don't like math. You're going to see, oh, there's something else I can do. And I can make even more money going into other careers that because it has a little math involved, I don't have to be afraid of it anymore. Final, final question or comment. I remember, and you probably don't know I listen to everything you say, but I remember one time when you were on my show way back in the 90s or whatever it was, people have to realize this show had been around for a minute. Despite my youthful appearance, I started when I was really young. <laughs> I tell people that when they say, 26 years, how old were you? I was a teenager. But check this out. You said to me, Lee, there is no bias on standardized tests when it comes to math. Elaborate. Yeah. Okay, here's my reason. Either you know it or you don't know it. And if you don't know it, then you're going to use an excuse that is biased. Because you've had all of these years from first grade to 12th grade and then junior college, uh, they call it other kind of reasons. And you have the computers now. Man, I didn't have those kind of things when I was going to school. But you have all of the avenues, everything that's possible to know and how to get to do mathematics. And you have a lot of, we have a lot of good math teachers in Lee County. Um, Mr. Teal is one. I didn't know that. The principal of Dunbar High School is an excellent Carl Burnside. Carl Burnside is an excellent math. Walter Watkins, an excellent math. All those are good math teachers. And they enjoy teaching math. I just like to keep in the know-how, and it keeps the brain. Well, man, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We encourage people to call our great math man and the publisher of the finest newspaper in all the land, the Community Press. My good friend James Middlebrooks here on Lee Pitts Live. Thanks for joining us this morning, and we'll see you next week. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production.